So this is the continuation of section 4.4, the fundamental theorem of calculus. So the next topic is something called the net change theorem. Um, because the fundamental theorem of calculus states that if f is continuous on the closed interval from a to b, and capital F is an antiderivative of little f of x, on the interval a to b, then given all of that we know that f of b minus f of a is the result. But because f prime capital F prime of x is little f of x, because that's the definition of an antiderivative, is that it the derivative of the antiderivative is the original function. We could do a substitution into the above fundamental theorem statement, take out little f of x, and put in capital F prime of x in its place. And what that results in is Um, a net change in the value of f I mean capital F net change in the value of f capital F on the interval a to B. So um, let's say for example that um, capital F of X is a is a um, position function. Let's just say that's what it is. as an example. Then if I took say f of 3, my position at time 3, and subtracted f of 1, my position at time 1, I would find out just how far I changed and I should have written the word net um, in front of change. So let me go back and kind of squeeze that in here. That gives me the net change in position um, from time 1 to time 3. So if I'm 50 miles away from some place at time 3 and I'm 30 miles away from some place at time 1, then 50 minus 30, that means I've moved 20. Um, at least that's my, my change in where I am located. Um, the path that I traveled might have been further than that, and that's a totally different idea, which we'll come back to later. But the net change in that value is um, how far I am from where, in, I, where I was at time one and where I was at time three. Just Take those two positions and subtract them, and how far apart are they? Okay. Um, well, to understand this, what is capital F prime of x? If f of x is a position function, its derivative is velocity, a rate of change in position. So. Um, what we would have is the integral of a velocity function, for example, would give us the net change in position between the two positions at time A and time B. So anytime you have a, um, a rate function that's being integrated using a definite integral, it's going to give you the net change in the value 
that's changing at that rate um, between the times A and B or, or the places A and B. So, for example, um, example 9. A chemical flows into a storage tank at a rate of 180 plus 3T liters per minute. So that's a rate. Um, so since that's in liters per minute, that's a rate of change of volume with respect to time, dv dt, where v is volume. And we're told that that's 180 plus 3t. And the units are in liters per minute. And t is time in minutes. And the minutes vary from time 0 to time 60. Find the amount of the chemical that flows. Find the volume of the chemical that flows into the tank during the first 20 minutes. Um, so um, in that case, our V of T will be our volume. And dV dt is the rate at which that volume is changing. It's the rate at which it's flowing into the storage tank. So during the first 20 minutes, what we'll want to do to find the volume that occurs, the volume change that occurs during that time is to integrate from 0 to 20 our dV dt function with respect to t. So by substitution, that's going to be the definite integral from 0 to 20 of 180 plus 3t dt. So antiderivative of 180 is 180 times t. Keep in mind that's not x because the differential is here is t. So any variable that we're going to be using here is a t. And the antiderivative of 3 times t is t squared over 2 times 3, so 3 halves t squared, evaluated from 0 to 20. So what do we substitute in first? The upper limit, 20, then what operation? Subtraction. And then what number gets substituted in? The lower limit, 0. Now in this particular case, like a whole lot of cases, when we substitute 0 in for the variable, that whole expression at the end becomes 0. And you may become complacent about thinking, oh, I'm substituting in 0. Anything behind the subtraction sign will therefore have to be equal to 0. And that's really false. Because if, for example, we were substituting into the cosine function with 0, that's not 0. It's 1. Or if I were substituting into e to the x with 0, e to the 0, also 1, not 0. So be very careful about just making an assumption that, that everything behind the subtraction sign becomes 0, because that's really not true, and it's lazy to to uh, think that that's always true and not to actually think about the real values that you're getting. All right, so uh, if you do that arithmetic, you should get 4,200. So the amount of chemical that flows uh, during the first 20 minutes is 4,200. And what are the units? I'll let you think while I'm writing. During the first 20 minutes, Four thousand two hundred. Yep, you got it right. Liters. Flow into the tank. All right. So that's pretty good. That's a pretty good example of the net change theorem.
So as I mentioned earlier, another major application of this is to find the, the um, distance, net distance traveled, um, which some people will call displacement, which is good. Um, and we're going to compare that with total distance traveled. And to make sense of that, let's say that I am standing right here. Um, and I'm at, I'm on the number line at, let's say, negative two. If I walk this way five steps and then turn around and walk backwards one step, not drawn to scale. There are two different distances that I could talk about. One would be that when I went five steps to the right, that put me at three. And when I went one step to the left of that, that put me at two. So my displacement is where am I now compared to where I was at the beginning? Well, I'm, I started out at negative two, I'm now at two, so I'm four away, which is two minus negative two, by the way. I'm four places away from my starting point. This is net change in distance, also known as displacement. Now there's another distance that I could be interested in instead of, you know, where am I relative to where I started, net change in distance uh, called um, displacement. I could be asking, well, how many steps did I take? That's a distance as well that I might be interested in. And that's what we're going to call total distance. And the total distance I moved was I took five steps and then I took one step for a total of six steps. Four and six obviously are not the same number. And so what we need to do is we need to account for the fact that when I'm moving in an opposite direction, my velocity is negative. And when velocity is negative, um, that's going to decrease the position number. Like when I'm moving from three to two with a negative velocity, um, I'm decreasing from three to two. When I'm going to the right with a positive velocity, that's um, going to give me a positive five um, because I'm moving to the right. So in order to make this work out, we're going to have to, in order to make this um, be what we want it to be, we're going to have to separate the steps to the right and the steps to the left from each other, like I did here, five steps to the right, one step to the left. And what we're going to have to do is, uh, since if we were integrating, if we integrated a positive thing and got five, we'd be happy. But if we integrated a negative thing, because our velocity is negative, and got a negative thing, that's not going to make us happy about total distance. And in fact, that sum is the net change which is the definite integral, whoops, made a little mistake there, the definite integral from, um, well, I don't have times associated with those, so from A to B of um, my position function, I'll call it S of T, oh, I'm sorry, of my rate function, the rate of change, will give me the displacement um, s of b minus s of a. So that's where the, um, what ends up being five minus negative, uh, well, whatever. I, I'm not actually using the numbers that I, that I had there. So at any rate, that, that um, net change, you know, how far am I from where I started? The answer that's supposed to be four, that's going to be what we already know how to do. 
What we would want to do, though, is we would want to change that negative one into a positive one. And the way to do that is uh, to take its absolute value. It's one way to do that, which would give me 6. Um, another way to make that happen, because absolute value is uh, actually correct, but another way to do that is to think of anything that's already positive. When you take its absolute value, it won't change it. Like the absolute value of 5 would be 5. But if anything's negative, um, when you take its absolute value, you're going to be taking the opposite of that negative number to turn it into a positive so that you get the answer 6 for total distance. And so as it turns out, the uh, total distance traveled is kind of what we already did. We're going to get some of the same numbers, but what we're going to do is we're going to integrate from A to B the absolute value of the velocity function. Of course, the velocity function is the derivative of position. I'll write that down here so that that's super clear. Okay. And the way we'll deal with absolute value is, as I said before, any parts of S prime that are already positive, we'll leave them alone. If they're negative, we'll take their opposites. And what may happen between A and B, like that absolute value we talked about before, um, that example a while ago, is that we'll have to split that into separate intervals. And so that's that uh, total from A to B can be uh, found by going from A to C plus from C to B. And um, so we'll have an integral of any times that the velocity is a positive function and minus the integral of the velocity function when the velocity is negative. And that minus that negative thing will end up making it positive, like minus a negative 1 over here added to 5 gets us 6. All right. <clears throat> so if you look at figure 4.36, four, figure um, the displace or the, the uh, areas of those regions are positive numbers, a sub 1, a sub 2, and a sub 3. And the displacement is kind of like what I said earlier. If we had a sub 1 steps in the positive direction, then we'd have a sub 2 steps in the negative direction, which would be a negative number. And so what we'd have to do is subtract that positive number to make that turn out right. And then since a sub 3 is above the axis, we just add that. So we have to turn those negative things into, I'm sorry, I said that wrong, the la very last statement. So in order to get the displacement, we want to have like positive 5 minus 1 is 4. And then, I, of course, there's an a sub 3 there that I didn't account for. So you let the thing, the area, be signed in value. And if it's negative, it takes away from it, moves to the left as opposed to moving to the right. However, the total distance is we're going to add those areas. And to get the integral, um, let me draw a picture of that. To get the integral to work for total distance, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to integrate, let's say this is from A to C. And since that's above the x-axis, we're going to integrate from A to C of our velocity function. And it's going to be just fine because it's already positive. No change is necessary. Then if this point is at D, since that's negative velocity, we're going to subtract those negative things, that velocity when it's negative from C to D. And then um, when we get to E and we're done, um, well, since that's from D to E is above the axis, we'll add the integral from D to E of our velocity function. In essence, what we've done is when the velocity is positive, we just add that integral of the positive velocity thing. But in this middle case, where the velocity is negative, that absolute value, what we'll have to do to, to evaluate that is we'll have to 
take the opposite of those velocities that are negative for that middle piece. Okay. So let's do a, a specific example. The velocity in feet per second of a particle moving along a line is given. And I'll write it down as soon as I move this up a little bit. This is example 10, by the way. All right, so the velocity is given to be t cubed minus 10t squared plus 29t minus 20 where t is the time in seconds. Okay, first question, what is the displacement? This is just, how far is this thing, this thing's position different from one time to the other? So it doesn't matter what path they took in between. They could have gone seven billion miles in between, but they could end up being only two away from each other. And that's that two that we're looking for. So if you'll recall, our displacement will be the integral of our velocity function from a, which is 1 in this problem, to b, which is 5. <clears throat> so we're integrating the velocity function. So I'm going to write that velocity function in here. dt. All right, so the antiderivative of t cubed is 1 fourth t to the fourth minus 10 thirds t cubed plus 29 halves t squared minus 20t. Evaluated from 1 to 5. Okay, so we would substitute in which number first? The 5, right. So I'm substituting 5 in to my antiderivative for each t. Then what operation? Correct. Subtraction. And what number substituted in now? You're absolutely on it. You got it. Good job. It's 1. So we're substituting in 1 for each t. And you do all that arithmetic and do it correctly, you should get 32 over 3. And that's our displacement in what units? Feet. We're 32 thirds feet, so almost 11 feet from um, at time 5. We're 32 thirds feet away from where we were at time one. Don't know how many steps I took or how many feet I traveled from time one to time five, but my location change from time one to time five is the 32 thirds feet. All right, so part B. Um, this one, when we're finding total distance, The integral will almost look the same except for one major, major difference in that what we'll be doing from 1 to 5 is we'll be taking the integral of the absolute value of our v of t.
And so we need to know from 1 to 5, is that function ever taking on negative values? And where does it take on positive values? So um, what you're going to have to do is solve the equation t cubed minus 10t squared plus 29t minus 20 equal to 0 to find out any places where it might conceivably change sign from positive to negative. And so we would want to factor that, and it factors to be t minus 1 times t minus 4 times t minus 5. And so the t values where there's a change in sign possible be time 1, time 4, and time 5. Now actually all of those um, numbers are important to our problem. Um, if I'd gotten, for example, 7, which is a number that's not between 1 and 5, I don't care about that one. Or if t had been negative 16, I don't care about that one. I only care about the ones that are involved between and including the upper and lower bounds of my problem. So uh, if we look at a graph of that uh, function on our calculators, um, time 1, it's right here, 0. Time 4, it's 0. And time 5 is 0. And the graph looks like this. It's positive between 1 and 4 and negative from 4 to 5. So because of that, this definite integral will have to rewrite the part that's uh, got positive y values for our velocity function. So from 1 to 4, we're going to take the absolute value of that positive thing, leaving it unchanged. Remember, the absolute value of like 7 is still 7. So since that's a positive output for that function from 1 to 4, the absolute value of it is itself. So we're going to integrate from 1 to 4 our velocity function, dt. Now, to take the absolute value of the function from 4 to 5, uh, since it has negative outputs, we're going to have to subtract those negative things from 4 to 5. So we're going to subtract the integral from 4 to 5 of our velocity function. So by taking the opposite of our velocity function, where it's negative, we turn it into a positive number, which of course is what absolute value does. Okay. So, let's see. The next step would be to find the antiderivative. The good news is, although we have two integrals, they have the same integrand. So uh, the antiderivative will be the same in both cases. 1 fourth t to the fourth minus 10 thirds t cubed plus 29 halves t squared minus 20t evaluated from 1 to 4 minus same antiderivative because it's the same integrand 1 fourth t to the fourth minus 10 thirds t cubed plus 29 halves t squared excuse me minus 20t. And that evaluated from, ah, sorry, I kind of a pen slipped. That evaluated from 4 to 5. And if you substitute 4 into this anti first antiderivative minus substitute 1 in, you'll get 45 fourths 
minus, and if you substitute 5 into that antiderivative, minus 4 substituted into that antiderivative, you should get negative 7 twelfths. And your final answer is 71 over 6 feet. All right, so notice that there are, our answers for displacement and total distance are different um, because we had some movement in the positive direction and some movement in the negative direction. All right, so that ends this section. I will see you in, in class. Have a good day.